get to know a little bit about the person who sent the incident. His name is Sheikh Sadman Sakup. His ancestral home is in Kumri village, Lohagarobjilav Niril district, but he has been living in Kolna since childhood due to his father's job. Their residence in Kolna is at Haji Hanif complex near the Dak Bungalow Ferry Ghat, a place that those familiar with Kolna might recognize. He is a fourth-year BBA marketing student at Azam Khan Government Commerce College. There are several incidents intertwined with his life that he has personally witnessed. Although some have provided explanations, many have struggled to fully connect the dots regarding the true nature of these events. So, let's move on to the main incident. He has three notable incidents to share. The first incident takes place in a village called Charkotakala in Lohagarobjilav Niril district. This incident happened about seven years ago, around 2016 or 2017, on a winter night. The nearby village is Kumri, which is mentioned earlier as their ancestral home. In late December, he had gone to his grandfather's house for some reason. His cousin's name is Ahad, and after reaching the house, Ahad suggested they take a stroll around the village. He agreed, thinking it would be nice to explore the area. So, they headed out to their village. After reaching there in the evening, they spent time chatting until around 9 p.m. By 10 p.m., they settled down for dinner. After finishing their meal, Ahad proposed that they go outside for a bit. It's worth noting that the Madhumbi River flows about a kilometer away from Ahad's house. Before heading to the river, just after a half kilometer, they decided to sit on a bridge. As far as their eyes could see around the bridge, there were rice fields, and right when they got onto the bridge, there was a large Krishnakura tree. There was also a big pond which primarily fills up during the rainy season, while rice cultivation takes place in the winter. That night was also a full moon night, and everything was clearly visible in the moonlight. They didn't take any extra lights, both had their mobile phones, which have flashlight features, so they went out with just their phones. When they left the house, it was around 2 a.m., possibly just after 1.30 or a little before 2. It was intensely cold, so both wore heavy jackets. Ahmed and Sadman, being of the same age, shared a good camaraderie. As they walked towards the village, they chatted about various things. At this hour, which was quite late, the street was empty except for the two of them. Due to the road running through the pond, there were no street lights on either side, it wasn't like there were electricity poles with lights. They walked along the path illuminated only by the moonlight. Eventually, they approached the bridge. The bridge had two railings and was relatively narrow. Sadman sat on one side of the railing while Ahmed sat on the other. They continued their conversation, surrounded by rice fields, with no trees nearby despite the intense cold. However, there was no significant fog that day. The moonlight allowed for a clear view even at a distance. About 20 to 25 minutes after sitting on the bridge, Sudharm and Sakab's gaze suddenly shifted toward the distant rice field, where he noticed a white figure walking along the edge of the field. The figure was quite tall. From a distance, it was clear that it resembled a human shape. Upon seeing it, Sudharm and Sakab felt a bit suspicious because it was around 2.30 or 3 a.m., and it was unusual for anyone to be in the rice fields at that time in winter. He then mentioned the sighting to Ahad, asking him if he could also see what he was observing. However, Ahad was facing the opposite direction and did not notice it at first. After hearing Sudharm and Sakab, Ahad turned around and confirmed that there indeed was something unusual visible at a distance, about a kilometer away. Sudharman and Ahad noticed that the figure appeared to be walking in its unique way. Suddenly, it seemed that the figure realized someone was watching it, as it stopped and then gradually turned towards the bridge. Following that, the figure started moving rapidly towards the bridge, almost as if it was running or gliding. Its speed was so intense that no ordinary person would be able to move that fast, even if they were sprinting. 
Within 40 to 45 seconds, the figure came very close to where they were. When the figure got near enough, they could discern that it indeed looked human. Initially, from a distance, it seemed like some light object lying there. In reality, this individual was wearing only a sparkling white dhoti. Upon noticing this, both Ahad and Sudharm and Sakab realized that they were in a serious predicament. Both of them naturally had a habit of smoking and had come to that bridge with some cigarettes. Suddenly, an idea struck Sadaman after arriving there. Sakab exclaimed, Jihad, quickly light the cigarette. After hastily lighting the cigarette, Sadaman told Sakab and Ahad, let's head straight home, I'm not feeling good about this. Ahad also felt fear and started walking quickly towards home. Within just a few seconds, the dread had indeed approached right by the bridge. There was a path leading down from the bridge towards the river on one side, while the other side led to the village where their home was. They glanced towards the side by the river and saw that the dread had taken on a significant height, and its face was visible. It looked as if a person's face had been scorched by fire, which is how it appeared, two eyes that were hard to make out, generally red and glaring, looking quite terrifying. Upon witnessing this, they hurried back home, feeling greatly frightened. They kept their courage and began walking straight toward home, eventually discarding the cigarettes. Both of them knew some prayers and started reciting them loudly, focused solely on moving ahead. It was essential for them not to look back, and they began walking even faster. Suddenly, they both heard a sound together, it resembled the clattering of wooden sandals often referred to as carom. When someone's feet step on dry earth or something solid while wearing this type of wooden sandal, it makes a distinct sound. The noise seemed to be coming from behind them, but Sakab and Ahad were wearing shoes and realized that the sound was not from their footwear but was indeed coming from behind them. Hearing this sound, they realized someone was following them, but they chose not to turn back. Instead, they quickened their pace even further. When they started walking, there was a sound coming from behind, a clattering noise. It could have been the sound of their shoes, but they could clearly hear this distinct click-clack sound from behind, which indicated that someone was approaching them. This noise followed them closely, and at one point, seeing no other option, they decided to run because the click-clack sound, which had initially seemed distant, now felt like it was right behind them. When they realized someone was indeed close, Sad Man Saki and Ahmad told Rahat to run. As soon as they said this, the two of them took off towards their house. Suddenly, from behind, a heavy voice was heard calling out, Why are you running? If you have the courage, stop for a moment, let's have a little chat. But they understood that if this person managed to catch them, the situation would turn dire so they quickly made their way home since it wasn't very far from the bridge. They were so frightened that immediately upon reaching home, they performed ablution and prayed two rockets of voluntary prayer. Then they lay down straight on their beds. In the morning, both of them were inflicted with a high fever. Sad Man Saki then told his aunt about what had happened that night. His aunt became very angry, asking why they had gone to the bridge at such a late hour. She told them that especially near that bridge, particularly under the Krishnakura tree, many people had reported seeing strange beings at night, causing a lot of fear. After this incident, they did not visit their teacher for two or three days. Eventually, the fever subsided, marking the first such experience that Sad Man Saki had gone through. Now let's move on to the second incident. This event took place at his maternal grandfather's house. It was likely to happen sometime between January 18th and 20th, 2020, during the hot season. He had gone to visit his grandfather's house, located in a place called Shandrajira in the Gopalganj district. Close to it is a village named Malapara. Before entering his grandfather's house, there are about 10 to 15 tall palm trees. Just past the palm trees is the grave of his mother's grandfather, who is the father of Sad Man Sakab. To the left of the grave, there is a large single-story building. 
The main road leading to the house runs between the grave and the building. This building was constructed even before the War of Independence. It has only two adjoining rooms, but they are quite spacious. Due to Sad Man Sakab's grandfather having a lot of rice fields, the building was once used as a granary. Later, it was renovated to make it livable. On the north side of the house, there is a large tin shed, and on the south side, a two-story building which has been constructed recently. After arriving at the house, they spent a delightful day there. After dinner, he was instructed to sleep in the old building, which they referred to as the Kanchari Room. He had slept there many times before without any fear or encountering anything supernatural. Before going to sleep, he stepped outside to smoke a cigarette, as he has a bit of a bad habit of smoking. At that time, nothing had happened to him, he hadn't seen anything either, so he went to sleep in the building feeling quite at ease. He was alone in the entire building, which had two rooms. One room was relatively smaller compared to the other. The largest room had four beds, and adjacent to the building was the grave of Sad Man Saka Bai's maternal grandfather, as we mentioned initially. He was lying down on the left side of the grave, meaning the first bed in the building, which was attached to the grave. In that room with the bed, there was a window that was very close to the grave. The bed next to that window was where he was lying down. Since it was hot, he needed some airflow, so he was sleeping with the right side of the bed near the window next to the grave. Regardless, because of the heat, he had kept the window open while sleeping. For a while, he was looking at his phone and trying to access Facebook. At some point, he put his phone down and attempted to sleep, but because of the excessive heat, he couldn't fall asleep. When he decided to go to sleep, it was around midnight. As he lay tossing and turning in bed, it became past one o'clock, and still, he couldn't sleep. Suddenly, he heard the sound of anklets, as if someone was walking down the road, which was right next to the house. Initially, he didn't pay much attention to it, as it was normal for people to be walking by the nearby road. However, he did not miss here. After about five minutes, it seemed that the sound of the anklets came from the direction where it initially went and was returning. As it returned, the sound from that direction gradually went from soft to increasingly louder, and when it passed the house, the sound slowly started to fade. Eventually, the sound disappeared completely. He thought maybe someone had gone out for some work, possibly carrying a bag with something jingling attached to it, which might explain the noise. This seemed plausible, or perhaps it could be some other sound. As he pondered this, he began to hear the jingling sound of anklets gradually getting louder, coming from the direction he had previously walked away from. It felt like it was approaching slowly. As a result, he could hear it more clearly, and eventually, it reached a point where the sound was coming again from the same direction he had gone initially. After some time, he could hear it again as if someone was walking back towards him. Several times this happened, and Sadiq Bai was getting quite frustrated because who else would be walking around at this late hour, disturbing him unnecessarily. He was trying to fall asleep but couldn't. So, he thought he would take a peek to see if he could track down the source of the sound after five or seven minutes, which seemed to be approaching again, starting to pass by the side of the room. Since the window was already open, he positioned himself slightly to one side of the window so he could see down the street, trying to spot anyone. He realized that the jingling was coming from one side of the street and becoming clearer. However, when the sound got close to his house, he couldn't see anyone despite having been looking from a distance. He thought he would certainly be able to see anyone walking up to his house, but he didn't. Instead, the sound seemed to move away again in the direction it had been heading. After seeing this, he thought perhaps it had vanished into the darkness. He hadn't noticed, but after four or five minutes, he heard the jingling sound of the anklets starting again from the direction where it had previously gone. He pondered that this time he would see who it was. So, he rubbed his eyes vigorously and looked intently, determined not to miss anything. 
However, he could still hear that sound gradually drifting away down the same street but saw no one. This time, he became quite frightened and considered shutting the window. It was swelteringly hot, but since he was scared, he wanted to close it. In the meantime, another event occurred, adding another layer to his fear. Until now, he had only been hearing the jingling of the anklets, but now it seemed like a horse was galloping across the ground, producing a distinct clopping sound. It felt as though this new sound was coming from the same direction where the jingling had first come from. He tried to focus, wanting to see where this horse sound was coming from, but what he encountered was something he was utterly unprepared for. He saw that a horse was indeed approaching, jet black and so dark that if it were oiled, it would shine and glisten. The most terrifying aspect was that this horse had no head. Upon witnessing this sight, a chilling wave of fear coursed down from his head to his body, causing every hair on his body to stand on end. After seeing this scene, he was unsure what to do. Whether to scream or take some other action escaped him. He felt as if his heart might rupture and escape from his body. He thought tonight might be the final night of his life. He started reading the prayers and blessings he knew, one by one, but due to fear, everything was getting tangled, and he couldn't read them properly. This time, another layer of fear was added, he started hearing the sound of anklets once and the sound of hooves another time. So, he stood by the window trying to see what was actually happening. Again, he saw that the horse had gone. The sounds of the horse and anklets were there, but he couldn't determine where the anklet sounds were coming from or who was wearing the anklets, he could not see this. Overwhelmed with terror, he curled up in a corner of the bed. When the call to prayer for Far was given, he got up and started calling out to the people in the other rooms. They came out, and he explained what had happened during the night. Upon hearing all this, they were quite astonished because no one around had ever heard such sounds at night, especially near the graveyard. There was a relative of his, a certain Sakab Bai, who also lived nearby, and they had never heard such noises either. Nevertheless, he had been there on different occasions, and although he had stayed in that room before, he had never heard these sounds. This was an event, but he didn't seek the help of any religious leaders nor did he give it much thought, since no real problem had occurred. Now, let's move on to the final incident that happened with him in Colma. The time was around the end of 2021, as far as he remembered. It could have been in the last week of November or the first week of December. It had never occurred to him that a supernatural event could happen in a busy city like Colma, but it did. The incident began mainly around the wedding of a friend's sister. His friend's name was Pridamda, and that day was his elder sister's wedding. Due to the timing of the Hindu wedding, the ceremony began around 9 p.m. The proceedings continued until approximately 3 a.m., as Hindu weddings involve many rituals that take a considerable amount of time. There were several participants at the wedding, including Shadman, Sakab, and Pritam, making a total of six attendees. Pritam's house is located just ahead of the Talatola Mosque. Since it was winter, everyone decided to have some tea, and given the late hour, it was quite chilly outside. They collectively decided to go to the Seven Roads area to enjoy some tea and light snacks. It's worth mentioning that tea shops usually remain open all night in Seven Roads. Walking from the Talatola Mosque to the Seven Roads intersection takes about three to four minutes. Upon reaching the Seven Roads intersection, they had tea and some light snacks. The route from Pridam's house is straightforward. First, they reach the Royal intersection, then Seven Roads, followed by a place known as Moyapoda. The road from Royal Intersection to Moyapoda is a straight path. Along seven roads leading from Kolna to Dhaka, there are numerous bus counters, and rows of buses are parked by the roadside at night. When they got to the Seven Roads intersection, it was quite late, and there were no other pedestrians in the area, apart from three or four police officers stationed near the tea shop. After finishing their tea and while walking back towards Royal Intersection, 
An elderly woman suddenly appeared in front of them as if she had come from behind a bus. The woman appeared to be around 70 to 75 years old, hunched over due to her age. She was wearing a dirty white sari with a torn sweater over it. All the buttons of the sweater were open at the front. A dark bundle was slung over her left shoulder, and her once black hair had turned completely white, showing signs of large knots and various colored threads intertwined within them. Colored rope means a rope that has been dyed. With these, they have tied multiple rings of various colors and stones in both hands. And what is this large bone in the right hand? Is it from a human or some other animal? They certainly could not determine that. Also, the person has no sandals or shoes on, just completely bare feet. Looking at that person, there was nothing frightening or unusual about it. Then sad man Sakabai addressed the elderly woman as grandma and asked, Grandma, do you need anything? Instead of answering the question, she snapped back in a stern tone, saying, What are you guys doing here at this hour? Sad man Sakabai responded, We were at my sister's wedding, and after a lot of work, we got a bit tired and came out for some tea. Now that we've finished our tea, we're heading home. Upon hearing this, the elderly woman warned them sharply, just go straight home and don't look back. And what's the point of going out at this hour? You should never go out at this time. Her voice was such that it sounded like a thin neck and a thick neck talking together. Meanwhile, those who had come out for tea, including sad man Saka Bai and Pritam Day with a few others, thought the woman might be mad because she did not respond to their questions and began to walk away. After taking a step or two, sad man Sakabai turned around to check if the elderly woman was still there, but surprisingly, he saw no one. He was a bit startled and told everyone, Hey, look back, this woman isn't here. Everyone then turned to see that she really was gone. Where could she have possibly gone so quickly, someone wondered. Others suggested, there are so many cars by the roadside. Maybe she slipped behind one of them or went ahead, which is why we can't see her. But Sadiq's brother Sakib was in disbelief. He told everyone, let's look around and see where he went. Then everyone began searching for him, but they could not find the elderly woman anywhere. Every bus park there was searched thoroughly. It was stated from the beginning that the road was completely straight, anyone attempting to move sideways along this road would surely be noticed. It was impossible for someone standing behind the bus to disappear, as they had checked every spot meticulously, and there were no alleys nearby where someone could slip away. After the elderly woman scolded them, it wasn't expected that she would turn and vanish in just one or two seconds. The road was not dark, there was ample light, and it was quite clear. So, where did that woman go? Who is she? Nevertheless, they made efforts to search for her again. They even moved from that place to Pritam's house, yet there was still no trace of the woman. Many present, especially the shopkeepers who worked there at night, also couldn't recall ever having seen such a woman. Even that night, no one could confirm having spotted anyone resembling her. The incident took place in the area between Royal Moor and the Muddy Pothole, yet even after all those efforts, Sadiq's brother Sakib had never encountered that woman again. The question remained, why had she warned them? What was the story behind it? This became a mysterious matter because after stepping away from the woman, they didn't encounter any terrible incidents. There is indeed a mystery at play in this location, who was that woman, and why had she cautioned them? This part of the incident remained an enigma. This was the scenario that Sadiq's brother Sakib sent. I presented three small incidents to the listeners. I hope that these six stories have managed to evoke a thrill of fear among you.